morning, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, we have a special guest with us back on the show. We have Sakis Tolis of Rotting Christ. Welcome back to the show. Hello to all Metal Messiah listeners. This is Sakis from Rotting Christ. So, Sakis, 2018's been a pretty big year for you all. Um, extensive touring with all this shit that's going on in the world. Did you guys have any trouble out on your tours? always have troubles <laughs> and this is the spirit mm -hmm. uh, especially the last year we had the big troubles I mean, especially, especially some territories we even paid some days in the jail uh, but uh, anyway you know this is the spirit this is the way this is the path we have chosen um, when we formed the band since we formed the band so that's all we keep on going the band unfortunately or fortunately became more famous now so this is a more sounds more painful for more people. So more many times we face some problems. Yes. And now also, you guys, final touches on the new album at the end of the year and the release of your book Non Servium, the official story of Riding Christ. So tell us a little bit about the book and why you yeah. why you wanted to get your story out there. You know something. Actually, I'm not this person that I'm uh, usually writing. Um, um, I'm writing these kind of things, but uh, when Dale from A Cult Never Dies, he's a very good um, publisher, writer, author, came up to me and um, told me, asked me, hey, Sykes, do you want to write uh, something about the history of the band? This year is the 30 years of the band. So the 30 year celebration for the band. I'm saying, all right, really? All right, yeah, man, let's do it. Let's go ahead. I think that we have some weird stories, especially from the past from the old, old days to reveal to the people. So we went ahead with a book, I think, and it, it, it turns to be really good. Yeah. So what it was a pain, actually, it was a pain. It was a pain in the beginning because I had to, make, to do so many interviews. <laughs> like, uh, I had to talk, to speak, uh, to chat every day, like, oh, man, um, it, it is not that easy for me to speak with someone from England because of the accent. But on the other hand, I came up like... Uh, despite the difficulties I faced, uh, I realized I discovered more myself, uh, who I am and what was my story. And sometimes, you know, we are currently in a very easy, stressful uh, era, so sometimes we forget who we are. So we, with the book, I've, uh, we, uh, uh, I remember, I realized who I am. Oh, and what was it like? I mean, you, you basically just answered to this. Uh, you're like realizing who you are, but what was it like going back through 30 years? How long did it take you to write this book? Uh, more than one year. One and a half year. It was, it was crazy because sometimes uh, that's uh, where the last analog uh, eras from humanity. I mean, we didn't have any clue, any evidence, like nowadays, no photos, very few photos, no internet, no computer, not even cell phones. You know what does it mean for a new kid? Uh, oh, that's primitive. It was quite, it sounds very primitive. So it was very hard to, to search, to go back in the days and uh, to rethink all these stories. Now, how would you say that Rotting Christ has evolved as a band over three decades? Uh, a lot. Uh, just listen to our first demo, just listen to our last album. Big <laughs> difference. On the other hand, we still keep the... I gotta say, we still keep the atmosphere just keep the, the established uh, melodies of the band, the established sound. Uh, and despite the fact we became better players, we still, I think that we are still creating dark music, dark vocal, black music, which is very important for us. Now, is the book available for purchase worldwide? Yes, yes. If you read the Cult Never Dies publishing, you can find it out there, the link where it drives you to the purchasing of the book. And now also, Riding Christ, several albums and EPs out. You're about to release your 
18th full length, The Heretics Off Season of Mist Records. But before we discuss, you know, what's in the album, please tell us first about the cover art and the artist and what you wished it to depict when you talked to him. Yes, I want something different this time. I want I didn't want to go on with this Photoshop thing. So I was looking for a painter, a good painter, a new guy, especially from Greece, that can paint something uh, that can follow my uh, concept uh, I had in my mind for the album. So I found one very good, talented person. He came up with this uh, very good painting, in my opinion, and uh, put it as a cover. Simple as that. And so tell us now about writing the album from a lyrical standpoint. I mean, for me personally, just reading the lyrics without any music, they were almost like reading a literary work with, you know, all the quotes you have from, you know, the philosophers and writers and the religious yep. references. Who yes. Tell us a little bit about your your inspirations and in writing this album lyric, lyrically, Sakis. Yes, uh, for this album, my first read, I first had the meditation. Uh, who is going to pay sit about uh, the 14, 13, 14 album of a band that exists for 30 years? <laughs> so, you know, you copy yourself. So I want I want to find the reason to write an album. I want, so I sense myself more. So I read a lot. I read philosophers, readers, authors, history of time were, that were criticized from the church, from the local system back then as heretics. Mm -hmm. People that follow the same path that we are currently following uh, nowadays. So I say, right, you are one heretic. So I just started to read, read a lot. So I found some saying, some quotes of them that maybe change the history of, uh, change the history of uh, humanity. You know, if you don't push things in your life, you don't say things. Uh, so all those people, I think with their sayings and concepts and uh, quotes, change the humanity. So I was influenced by them. So this is the reason, uh, this is where I was based on this album ly lyrically. And the very last song, kind of a bit of a tribute to the works of Edgar Allan Poe, of course, with the, th yeah. the song called The Raven. So what intrigues you about this man and why did yeah, you want to... Yes, it was not um, the, uh, that heretic. The song we chose, it was not heretic, but it was very atmospheric. So I always finish the album with a more, uh, with a real atmospheric song. Mm -hmm. uh, Edgar Allan Poe uh, was... I the writings, a lot of his writings, uh, a lot of his creations are quite theoretic at the age of time, okay? Not now. Uh, so I was inspired and I wanted to put a treat this, uh, to this writer. And so, so how did you go about now writing as far as, uh, do you write the lyrics first and then the music or do you write the music or... How do you go about? So, uh, an old time nightmare. Uh, sometimes I write the lyrics, sometimes I write the music. Usually I write the music. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the last album, for this album, I, write, I wrote many so most of the songs I wrote more the lyrics. Like for The Raven, for instance. Uh, I was inspired from this and I started to play the guitar and to find myself and to, if there is something that can accompany this uh, this poem so this is how i worked more on this last album you know now how did you go about composing the music for this album and musically did you guys do anything different or have any kind of different approaches when when writing the music for the heretics uh was quite similar like the ritual the pre our previous album because uh, I'm the only composer the bands all the all those years the band uh, I didn't choose that different way of uh, thinking mm -hmm. or uh, writing uh, I just read more in order to compose this al last album 
the, the studio recordings took part in Athens, in very close where I live, in our guitar player studio. So for me, it was very easy and gave me more freedom, artistical freedom, to stay there many, many hours and to fight myself and fight the best thing. Uh, but usually it didn't change that much. Uh, it didn't change that much. And now you had someone else help you produce this one? Usually you produce everything yourself. Did you have somebody else with you producing this one, Sakis? No, the last five albums. No, no. I do it myself. Mm-hmm. I'm, I want to believe that, you know, I want to create honest albums. And okay, I don't want to get, you know, the bigger producer to make things big or, this is not me. Mm-hmm. It's what, what be me. It's very important in your life to be you. Okay, mm-hmm. we don't have the best quality album ever out there, but maybe we have one of the most honest albums out there, which is very important uh, for me. This is me, actually. As I, told you, and I want to follow myself. So I became better during the time, uh, during the years. I become, I had to become, I forced myself to become better, uh, to know more about production. So in order to have something honest and true to the people out there. Now, have you performed any of the music from the album live yet? Not yet. Uh, one song, yes. The last tour with Fatain, we played one uh, brand new song, and it sounds. Whew, Good. No, we enjoyed a lot. We enjoyed a lot. I don't know if it sounds good for you down there, but for me, you know, and the other guys, we felt like all right. Good. And now, are you guys going to be doing a lot of touring this year as well, following the release of the album? Uh, I hope to be in good health and uh, to tour the world once again because this is our destiny, destination uh, to play music all around the world. And despite the tiredness and the problems we faced during the tours, uh, we are very happy and very glad when we finish one. So when you see all those people smiling and tell me, all right, sorry, you made my day. This is why why we are keep on going, keep on going, because we think that we feel like it makes sense what they are doing. And Saka, if, if people want to learn more about the band, what's going on, you know, touring, what are the best websites to go to for that? Website? What do you mean? Like your Facebook page, you guys have a... Uh, yes, we have all, all these uh, social uh, networks uh, there. Just Google Earth in Christ, you can find the news. Uh, we also we are very proud that we... We are working very hard on our channel in YouTube. We put our music there for free. Uh, we pre- prepare lyric videos for all our, of our songs, the upcoming album. We will have uh, lyric videos, contains lyric videos for all the songs. Uh, and we put everything in our TV, in Erotic Christ TV, in the YouTube channel. It's our channel over there, and so everyone can su- subscribe and can check the band's news. Everything and all the videos for free. No, don't oh, uh, nice. don't think that. Uh, yes, don't think that asking money, you know, from uh, music is nowadays is something good. You know, this is the spirit we started. So our own income is uh, in life on the on the street, the streets, on the road. So we put our music for free there. So feel free to subscribe and to check our music. And there you have it. Writing Christ has a new album out called The Heretics off Season of Mist Records for you to check out. You can follow the band on their media sites. And Sakas, thank you so much for taking the time out to tell us about the new album and the book and all the best to you in the new year. Thank you for your interest. Uh, keep on going. I know you're staying, you know, you are doing a really remarkable thing over there. Keep the spirit alive and until we meet up, there in the battlefield, non-Serbian brothers and sisters, of course.